Hello internet and welcome back to my Sky Island playthrough. In the last episode we came back from our expedition where we had been seeking sheet metal and steel frames. We ended up purchasing some of those materials using the uh, Sky Island infinity ore to gather those things and then we used those things to craft the next room upgrade for our base and it looks pretty nice here. We went from a 3x3 cube to something like 7x7. Pretty happy to have that expansion really regardless we're going to get things set up a little bit better at our base here in the future. We then spent the rest of the episode focusing on setting up our power grid. We put together a box recharger which we had been working towards. Now that we can plug our soldering iron into the power grid we were able to very easily craft this and we set that up in our main room and bridged the gap between that and our battery using an extension cord. So now we have a hub for power inside of this main room and I think that was pretty much the entirety of what we focused on in the last episode. So everyone, welcome back to the series here. I did complain at the end of the last episode that we weren't getting very much done because we're on episode like uh, 34, I believe. But in reality, we've done an enormous amount in those episodes. If we look at the top here, we're on day three. So the fact that we've been playing day, you know, we're on day three and we've been playing for like 18 to 20 hours at this point. It's pretty crazy at how long that's taking. It's like 11 episodes per day. It's pretty, pretty ridiculous. But just in terms terms of what we've accomplished, three days to have gotten all of these upgrades seems pretty good to me. So I also thought while we're here we might as well craft that one upgrade we just never crafted. I believe it was the scouting lens here. We have everything required for this. We should have a pair of glasses upstairs and I'm not really sure what this does. I think this is the one that expands your vision radius when you first come down to the uh, or go on an expedition. And while I don't think that's particularly valuable, especially because we have the binoculars, I do think it's like important to unlock this so we can get to the next set of upgrades. That's how I should feel about all of these things because basically I'm pretty sure at this point we have to do some of these less valuable upgrades in order to get the ones we actually want. So if we head upstairs and look for a pair of eyeglasses we should be able to craft this here. Oh those crickets are very loud uh, in the background. I don't know if you'll be able to hear those but uh, I can absolutely hear them. So we're looking for glasses, pair of eyeglasses, and and that's to the south or to the east we moved that so let's grab those head downstairs. Oh, I forgot to mention in the intro, we also crafted our alpha container, but we didn't have the recipe for the next uh, container upgrade, if that's even implemented in the game at this point. So yeah, that's something we'll have to do. Oh, we need to be near the obelisk. Yeah, so what I think I'm gonna do is grab this one. Can we move these? We can. So we're going to move this up to our crafting area. That way in the future, we can just craft these things in our crafting room uh, and we don't have to pick everything up and go find an obelisk. So if I try that now, it should be available. It is. So let's craft this here. It gives us scouting one, which not 100% on what that is, but let's do this here. Okay, your vision expands. Future missions and exits will be scouted just a little bit better. Actually, that sounds really good because that sounds like it gives a vision upgrade to those locations, not to our landing zone. I had no idea it did that. That sounds pretty good because it'll give us more vision around our exit so we can actually know where we're going and see if there's any any uh, dangerous terrain or anything there. I don't know why I hit the map button. Obviously, we can't see that now. So that's pretty cool. You place it on the table. So do I have to activate it? No. You put the scouting lens on the table. You craft it from memory. Successfully completed your vision expanse. Okay, well, let's go check the statue to see if we can get the upgrade here. Okay, so empower the warp obelisk. No. Upgrade expeditions. Yes. Scouting too. Somehow you understand the statue is calling out for something that can strengthen its power. A new recipe has been learned. Craft this artifact to permanently upgrade the island. Reveals a bit more of the map around exit points and mission targets. So if we have a look at the scouting scope here, it requires a pair of binoculars. Now we did actually pick up a duplicate pair of binoculars when we were down uh, previously. So we actually have that. That would normally be uh, the hardest thing to obtain out of this list here, but we've actually already got the binoculars. 10 light batteries, uh, five light batteries, high capacity. Those could be annoying to gather, but we can just strip electronics when we're down. Uh, 20 duct tape we have, copper tubing's very easy to get, warp shards we know we have, and then we 
just need more cordage. Yeah, that's something I've been thinking about. We really need to pick up more long strings when we're down uh, exploring. We should be just gathering them as frequently as possible. Normally, I wouldn't bother with those in a typical playthrough because they're very obtainable, but because we're locked on the island and we have to actually go on an expedition, we don't want to run out of cordage. We would just like to have as much cordage at the base as possible. And let's just check, did that upgrade any other thing? No, it didn't unlock anything else. So, okay, so let's head back down into our room here and I guess for the evening we're not tired unfortunately we slept through our alarm in the previous day so our sleep schedule is completely messed up so we're probably going to be up until like I don't know noon or 12 you know like two in the afternoon something like that so I think we should why am I wearing a face shield face face shield Thermoplastic face shield with a mounting bracket intended to be attached over a hard hat or helmet. It gives pretty good protection to the eyes for relatively low encumbrance. Okay, for mouth encumbrance, aren't we wearing a scarf as well that I said repeatedly we need to drop? So we'll drop this scarf as well. And we can keep the face shield, I think that's fine. The dust mask is fine, it's very low encumbrance. Yeah, zero encumbrance. And everything else, we have a nape protector as well. Yeah, so when we were searching carcasses, probably the minor zombies specifically, when we were picking things up, it must have slotted those into the pockets on our helmet and that's why they're added uh, automatically to our worn equipment here. Does this give any kind of protection? No, it's just kind Cotton gives one encumbrance, two warmth on the head. I mean, that's fine. One encumbrance doesn't really matter. This is this is fine. And then, yeah, that seems to be it. I did say we would make some makeshift bandages in a previous episode, so maybe we can do that while we're just chilling here. I would like to move our food and drinks down here at some point as well so that we can... Uh, I, ju I just don't like the idea of them being out in the rain and the weather and stuff. I know it doesn't actually matter, but... And then we will check our batteries as we... Oh, it didn't bring all the batteries with us so we actually want to haul all these batteries up here to be on the charger because that's obviously something that we want these charged so we'll move those from here to here and we'll clear that filter we'll move everything because we want those to be charging is this still turned on it is uh, looked like it didn't pull everything what is in this corner here scraps of carpet and some nine mil casings no that's fine okay so what do we actually want to do today we want to i literally have forgotten the thing i was just talking about we have new books that we can read to see the recipes and things see what their skill levels are we can obviously read overnight while we're killing time oh it was bandages that i was talking about we can uh disassemble some of the shirts we brought back i think to make uh to make bandages here what else do i actually want we were going to do a lamp but we already have the lantern plugged in so i'm not super worried about that yeah i don't know what to do here uh, i guess we'll just start like just start something so we're not standing around so let's go check our clothing pile which actually we'll just do this with an all in advanced inventory here we're gonna look for shirt because i had brought back some shirts specifically to be butchered for uh, like cotton sheets or whatever it is that you take apart. Now, last time I did this, we messed it up because disassembling, we, we tried butchering, but butchering gave us the wrong cotton. So we want to, I believe, disassemble these. And if we mess it up, we just don't have that many clothes here. So let's disassemble. Where, where would I see cotton sheets? Repaired with canvas? That's weird considering it's, oh, is it canvas? It is canvas. Oh, well, we can't use that then. Okay, so all we have for this is the undershirt i guess uh which i'm not even sure it's going to give us very much because i think those have a separate butchery thing set up whereas the regular t-shirts have more fabric doesn't make a ton of sense but i'm pretty sure it's still that way taking it apart will give us three cotton sheets and 15 threads so let's make sure we need cotton sheets are the right thing here so we're looking for we're going to be making makeshift bandages here cotton sheet or patchwork sheets so that's correct so we're going to get materials enough for three of these so let's open that menu, disassemble. You fail to recover a cotton sheet, you fail to recover thread. So we got two sheets, which means we can make two makeshift bandages, which should be six total makeshift bandages. I believe it makes three per craft. No, it makes two per craft. Wait, why is this? So one of these recipes does not require cutting. So we're just ripping it and that makes two. But if we use a cutting tool, we actually get three out of it and it's slight, very slightly faster. Sure, let's make, let's make six uh, 
makeshift bandages here. And we'll just craft those, put those on the table. And then to make boiled makeshift, we do actually have a jug of water upstairs. So we can boil them. Uh, we probably should bring back another jug of water just for crafting things like this. And we'll start our first fire. I don't think we've had a fire on the Sky Island yet. So let's check all of our tiles again. And we're going to search for water. We have a gallon jug of regular water here. So we will take that with us. Head downstairs, let's mark a, what is it, fire, what's it called, wood? We have to mark a firewood source, which we do either through the, no, oh, no, don't, don't mark that as our firewood source. Um, so there's two ways to do this. You can set this in this menu, I believe, and set up a firewood source, or at least you used to be able to. And then you could also do it through the construction menu. I'm not sure which is correct, so we're actually just gonna do both. Ignore items in this area when sorting no firewood yes we're gonna put that on the same tile as our as our wood pile and we're just gonna use them interchangeably i don't know is there like wood we want to preserve that we wouldn't want to burn i don't think so and then let's set this up in the construction menu as well so we have that marked in both places this basically just enables us to automatically feed the fire while we're crafting and things like that and then we need something to seed the fire so we'll just grab like two twigs and uh, cause I'm not sure how fires work. Someone told me that like now you have to use kindling and that kind of stuff. I haven't really seen any evidence of that. I just, I don't know if that's just a thing people say or if that's actually correct. So let's grab our lighter here, start a fire in the fire pit there and just cr makeshift boiled bandages at this point. Should be correct? No, we can't. Boiled makeshift bandages. We don't have a tool with boiling quality. Is that correct? And we need nine bandages? Why? It used to be three. Why do I have to make nine at a time? What a stupid, why? It requires three water. So all of these are divisible by three. So why would you change the recipe to be, instead of being able to craft three at a time, now you make nine at a time? Because now that means you can't craft any that's less than nine? What a bizarre choice. I don't understand that at all. Uh, someone let me know why that is because I have no idea why that is. Also, if I'm boiling bandages, why does it give me clean water? Like I understand we're boiling, um, basically we're going from regular water to clean water, which is like fine, but do you know how dirty the water, I'm, I literally just grabbed a shirt, ripped it to pieces and I'm boiling it. Why would that result in clean, sterile water? Okay, doesn't matter. So we can't craft that because we need more sheets. Um, I suppose we can set up a clothing zone I guess, and and we'll see what other clothing we have. I don't think we have anything I really want to butcher though. And while we're doing this, we might as well set up food and stuff. So we'll set food up in, I mean, I guess we want it close enough to craft. I think everything within six tiles can be used for crafting, but I don't know how that works if it's like a dark tile, if that interferes with that. So we'll just put the food like north of our wood pile there. We'll set up a perishable food as well because otherwise it'll separate them and we don't really want that. And we'll set up a drink pile as well. We'll just put this near the battery charger. Always good to have your fluids near your electronics. It just makes perfect sense. So we'll do that and we'll save all of this. We will extinguish that fire for the time being, which I'm sure ruined the twigs we were, we were using there. We'll come up and we will sort our loot. That'll let us pull our stuff out and uh, take it down there. Let's have a look at our clothing, I guess. Okay, so what can I take apart for cotton? Uh, long underwear we can. What do we have duplicates of? Only like welding gear and stuff that's not really meant to be taken apart. Yeah, I guess we really don't have clothing. These are canvas, so we can't get uh, cloth out of them like I thought, or uh, cotton out of them like I thought. We do have the bikini bottoms, but we need those for a craft, and I'm not sure like what, you know, they're tiny anyway. So yeah, that's a bit unfortunate. Um, I guess we could take apart the long underwear bottom. I don't see a disassembly. Yeah, it doesn't look like we can disassemble these. So if we butcher them, we're not gonna get the cotton patches we need or cotton sheets, I mean. Okay, so we're not making bandages. I'm so annoyed that it requires nine. You have to make them in quantities of nine. Why? Why would you take that away from the player when previously they were three and you could make them at your leisure? Now I have to actually get nine bandages to make any any bandages at all. Okay, well, so that's a bust. Um, so I guess just read our books and stuff. Let's uh, pick up our our red books here we're just basically we just want to kill time until the sun comes up and we can go on an expedition looks like we unfortunately only have one new book so we'll read that i guess and since it's just one why don't we have a look at what kind of recipes it offers 
uh, hardened steam, uh, steel lamella, which I assume is for, was it, how do you say this? Lamellar armor? Lam lamellar? I don't know. Makeshift arc welder, we already have one. Welding tanks, we have spiked plating. Uh, we're not doing any vehicle work in this episode, in this uh, series, probably. Bike rack, compound great bow, copper pot, hand pump, hard plating. I can't believe, do we really not have a boiling quality item by the way because it said that as well for the bandages i don't understand how we didn't pick up i thought i specifically picked up pots and pans yeah so why did it say i didn't have the boiling quality tool with boiling of one or more yeah i just looked at it it was a boiling quality of two maybe because it has objects in it and it can't be used currently because there's stuff stored in it so let's uh unload the pot i guess you unload yeah it just happened to have like tools in it of course so i wish it didn't do that did it insert those when i sorted the piles god this episode's not going super well okay well we did say previously that we would continue working on our skills we were talking about maybe getting to tailoring three in hopes of making that spear strap which is like not great i don't want to do tailoring really but it's something to work towards so if we grab i don't know do we have a tailoring book it would be a good start instead of just crafting things. So we have tailoring to one, tailoring to three, which is faster. Okay, tailoring one is faster. So we can read that one at first. It has a plus two to fun. Yeah, we love, we love sewing, don't we, ladies and gentlemen? Let's read a tailoring one book. Let's stop and let's move over into the light. I don't know if that actually matters. Our focus is actually pretty decent for once. I suppose we should pop in an MP3 player or something. And if we look here, I actually did not realize we had all of those batteries as well. And I did say I wanted to take a flashlight in my inventory. So we're going to pick up a flashlight as well and reload the flashlight. Oh, we already had an MP3 in our person, on our person. I did not realize that. Okay, so let's read our book here. Unfortunately, we don't have a chair or something to sit in, which would help us with our weariness to get, just basically get comfortable and, and read a book is something, you know, that's generally good for killing weariness. Focus is actually going up with the MP3 player. I really thought it would go down considering we're, we're learning and stuff. Oh, and we're tired. It's only midnight. I really thought we were going to be up until like noon. Didn't we sleep until like four in the afternoon? Why are you tired at midnight? Okay, well, I mean, that that's... Okay, we can sleep, I guess. Man, this episode is not going to plan. How's everybody doing? I bet you're having a good day despite uh, my video being subpar. Why did this stuff not get sorted? I set up a food pile. Is this not encompassed by the unsorted pile? No, it is. So why, uh, why is this food here? Yeah, I was going to say it's because they're MREs, but then we have the meat jerky here. The meat jerky is not included with the MREs. So this is like calorie dense food that I don't really want to just be laying around. How do I see which tile this is on if we shift? Oh, we can't change our sorting categories. Yeah, there we go. So if I look for their one south, I mean, you should be included in that zone if i look again at the unsorted zone yeah so if you're one south why are you not i guess it's just because they're in the mres i don't know what to make of that oh also we do need a medicine pile i completely forgot about that we probably have more bandages than i thought because we never set up a, a medicine pile there's an mre we'll grab that actually let's search this way so we'll grab all that stuff your paper wrapper dehydrated fruit falls into your mre package Hmm. How does how how does fruit fall into a sealed MRE? Anybody know how that works? So let's go down here. We'll drop these on the non pair I mean it's the same pile. We'll drop this on our food pile here. And then we will drop the water kind of not on our beverage pile. I don't want to accidentally drink that, so we will just drop that like I don't know. We'll drop that beside the fire here. It's too close to the beverage pile, so it will still appear in the list, but it's it's something at least. Okay, so we are we are hungry. We might as well eat something while we are here. So let's uh, pop up to our food pile. 
have a look at what's spoiling here. That butter, we're just probably never gonna do anything with that. The pickled meat, I assume, is sealed in something. It is pretty calorie dense, so maybe we should have a little pickled meat here. And I think we're also getting to the point, like we have plenty of food, like, but it's mostly junk food. And we probably should prioritize like butchering something and bringing back, trying to start towards a freezer essentially. And again, I know it's only day three. That's something usually you don't get around to until later game, but we do want something that's like very calorie dense like meat so if we could bring a bunch of meat back and just cook it as necessary that would be pretty ideal so and because the day has flipped now and it's after midnight we are getting uh, back to zero vitamins we have to take some more vitamins in why don't we we can eat it's only one pickled meat we can eat pickled meat which I love pickled meat by the way I know it's something most people don't like but pickled sausages are fantastic so we'll eat that and then we'll look for something that maybe has some vitamin c or calcium in it a couple dehydrated fruit i'm not sure what exactly the vitamin c content is there but we'll eat one of those and we will the same with fruit leather i'm surprised fruit leather is not negative health isn't fruit leather like fruit that's been like very heavily with like sugar and vitamin c to be preserved for a little while i think is what fruit leather is actually we can dried strips of sugary fruit paste oh Okay, 1%, 21%, sure, we'll eat a fruit leather. And then after that, we just want something with calories, so we'll eat some shelled peanuts and shelled almonds, and then we will work on a multivitamin, oh, which is gonna be upstairs in our non-medicine pile. Let's make a medicine pile. Drugs, we'll put it this uh, over here because we rarely need those for crafting. And then is there a medications one or anything else that would need added here? No, first aid maybe? No, no first aid. So unfortunately, like, that's not gonna put our bandages and stuff on that pile, right? So how do we do that? Ignore keys, magazines, manuals, maps, mutagen, other. No, I'm not sure. Let's uh, let's sort this though. Save this, sort this. Yes, walk upstairs, medical gauze. So it did move those things into the drug category. So if we pop up here and we eat a multivitamin, in fact, eat two multivitamins because we saw previously that we have to do two of them. And we are only at some and plenty and some for vitamin intake. But again, we're going to eat again during the day. So I don't see that being a huge issue. So we do have 15, 17 bandages. That's better than I expected. I didn't realize we had so many. I'm wondering too if it even stripped all of the first aid kits. They might not have all been moved appropriately. We'll have to take a look at that. But yeah, that's good to know. Okay. I, I've forgotten what I was doing. We were going to sleep, but I was going to do something else first. This episode, man. Whoa, okay. Um, well, I guess we just go to bed since it's, <laughs> since it's, I'm tired and we kind of want to get up and have daylight to go on our expeditions and stuff. So we do have our pillow, our blanket, our mattress. Let's just go to bed, I guess. How's your day going, internet? I, di I didn't expect this one to be so, um like me not really knowing what to do i i probably should have worked up a plan before i started recording it's been 20 plus minutes and we haven't accomplished anything this is why i just play very slow no one ever seems to care every time i mention it people are like dude don't worry about it you're doing great you're doing great sweetie i don't know man i just once we're like down on the earth side and i'm actually like doing something it's a lot easier but uh when it comes to the base stuff for me i find that pretty boring so i always assume everyone else does but then people leave comments like oh man i can't believe you got a battery charger set up already and stuff like that oh so anyway what's going on with me well i had an eye doctor appointment your stomach gurgles probably nothing you should look into eating healthy yeah no i've been doing that and the game just doesn't like that i you know I don't know. Just doesn't seem to like it anyway. Glad to see the lantern still on. Did it deplete the battery? It did not. So it looks like that was changed as well. When this was first implemented, the batteries would still be drained even when something was plugged in. So it's pretty cool that that's no longer the case. And we're going to eat again. And we're going to, you know, get more vitamins here because it's time. Uh, I guess some bread for empty calories is fine. We don't have much that I am really happy to be eating here. All this stuff is from MREs and I really didn't want to crack them right away. So it looks like we actually probably should raid a few kitchens and just bring back, like do a few a few food runs I think would be beneficial for us here. It's just been so hard to get into towns and actually loot like those places has been a little difficult. So yeah, I guess just we'll eat some smoked meat is fine we'll have a little bread for some extra calories and hopefully we'll eat while we're down on earth side anyway and then we'll pop down here and have something to drink and i don't think we're going to take another multivitamin 
Uh, fruit juice and stuff should have plenty of vitamin C, so that will help as well. And we don't have any milk products, which would, of course, be, you know, where we would get most of our calcium. So I think we'll just have a little fruit juice here, and then we will have some water to kind of offset. We don't want to drink all the juice. We want to ration that for the vitamin C. So, and it's now 9 a.m. I guess we're just going to go on an expedition. We accomplished very little in our base here. I, I just, I feel like there was something else I wanted to do and I don't remember what it was. Well, we can take a few extra bandages since we know we have more bandages now. So if we just pick up like, yeah, four bandages is fine. We still don't have any hemostatic powder. Someone is knocking shit over downstairs. I don't know what that is. Yeah, unfortunately no hemostatic powder. So if we did get into a position where we were like um, actually taking a bullet or something like that, we're not really equipped to handle that. It did stack our bandages. We have saline solution. That's no longer necessary since the pink eye changes were reverted. 10 aspirin I have not updated to the new pain system. So we don't really need to carry codeine or anything with us at the moment. So what is even left up here after all of our movement? Okay, so we don't have um, like a firearm or magazine or mod tile. We don't have a melee weapons tile. We don't have an other tile, container tile, currency tile, key tile. What else do we got here? All this ammunition. Yeah, man, we have a lot of nine mil. I should be using my pistol more. That's right. We shopped at the, not the hub. Where did we get all that ammo from in the first? It was the refugee center. It was the refugee center. We grabbed all that. Okay, so I think we have all the materials that we really want to take with us if we're going to go on an expedition. So I think we're going to head down here. I think we're going to do a food run. And since I don't really have a large item in mind as something that I actually want to bring with us, we might take the spear this time instead of the barbed wire bat. Because if our goal is to clear a location and actually get some looting done, we would prefer the like better quality, uh, higher tier kiting weapon of the spear over this melee weapon that's partially damaged and of course that would limit us so we can't bring back a large item to be carried in our hands because we can't stow the spear anywhere but i think that's probably the way to go and if we just focus on like uh, i would like more raw materials remember we need copper tubing and things like that let's let's stop talking and let's get on the road here these my neighbors are like i'm pretty sure my neighbors are drunk because they're outside it's like four in the afternoon by the way because they're outside yelling back and forth and he sounds really drunk and his dogs are losing their minds every every couple minutes yeah so let's just go on an expedition here i'm feeling flustered so let's just go get on an expedition i'm sure i'm forgetting something uh but we're just gonna go here so quick expedition i mean if we're looking for food maybe we should also bring materials well we can't full butcher any i was gonna say we should bring like a tarp and stuff to full butcher an item or a carcass i mean but we can't really do that because we're limited in our time spent down on on earth side and if we end up full butchering like say we we killed that bear let's say in the last episode no way we could full butcher that so like what's the point of taking the high tier butchery stuff quick expedition field let's just go uh random mission yes so let's hit the map here and have a look oh i'm very close to something what is this it's the exit point oh literally like uh like 10 tiles away huh okay well let's look at our our other missions upgrade scouting no kill five unzombified mammals this expedition okay i love that a lot more than the uh kill 50 zombies because that's just way more time consuming and problematic uh even though we could have just hit them with the road roller it just was basically impossible with what i wanted to do so we were never going to do that but killing five critters we could probably do that we did do the uh black rats in a previous episode although it took us a long time to be able to do that kill the warp draining horde uh low level zombies are congregating at a location where warp resonance is high clear them out for a small reward we might be able to do this as well because um these are the low tier zombies there is a horde of them so it's like uh i think in the last time it was like 14 of them and we did use a vehicle for that but we could potentially do that on foot if we absolutely had to that is possible given our current equipment and stuff it would just be we'd have to be very careful about getting overwhelmed so let's see where these are kill the warp draining horde that is this one and it's near uh 
probably not a town, but something over here. Maybe we could find a vehicle. Road, road, unexplored. Yeah, I don't know what'll be over here, but we can head in that direction. And then the critters can be done anywhere. Obviously, it'd be a lot easier in the forest or whatever. Or remember, we talked in a previous episode about dealing with tadpole. Actually, it says mammals, doesn't it? So we couldn't do like tadpoles per se. I don't know how all of that is tracked exactly, but probably not uh, tadpole. Tad tadpoles, wasps, things like that probably don't count. So weird little segment of self-contained nothingness over here. Let's move and get our binoculars working. Okay, so what is this? Sand patch and burned ground. Yeah, I don't care about those. I mean, I guess we just had, <laughs> I don't know. There just doesn't seem to be anything of interest around. Let's go climb a tree. We talked about this in a previous episode about how much better the division is. And let's drop our backpack. That way we can lower our encumbrance and make falling a lot less likely. Now, how do we do this? Up Z level button and then down Z level button, climb east. A uh, bit tricky, falling won't hurt much, probably won't be able to climb back up. Okay, you lower yourself from the ledge, fantastic. So let's check, oh God, so much more vision. I love I love how big that is. So we do know that the light industry can have a, have a cube van, which would be great for clearing out that horde. It looks like there's a huge uh, set of craters here, which we're not gonna mess with. Moonshine still, I don't believe I've ever been to that location. I remember when it was added to the game though. Then we've got a shrubbery. It's covered in a single type of shrub. Okay, is that good? Is that bad? I have no idea what, is that important somehow? State park, okay. Desolate barn, yeah, we're probably just gonna move north, try to creep into the edge of this town, see if we can loot a house. Remember, I wanted to do like a food run here, so we'll probably focus on that. And then is this a school? No, it's a steel mill. I mean, we're just not equipped to loot a steel mill. There probably would be tools and stuff that we would want there. Uh, but I imagine the main draw here would be like if you're looking for lots of metal material, but we're not gonna be able to carry really any of that back with us. Okay, so I think our plan is just to move north. I think I will swing by the still here just to to see the location. I've never been there before. Let's make sure we grab our backpack. Where our backpack? Nothing to pick up. Fantastic. And did that leave a note on the map? It sure did. So let's delete that. And yeah, we're going to head up to that still, I think. And if we find any animals in the forest here, we will put them down. Oh, I guess if it says mammals, that would also not include birds, which is like a whole thing, I guess. What is a bird is avian right is the is the the name for bird or not mammals they're avians avians okay let's just head north i mean if we see some there's a squirrel we're not going to be able to get the squirrel we would like to see more rats because they were like much slower than the other mammals were and they didn't seem to run away quite as fast as everything else so that would be pretty much ideal moonshine still we saw nothing on approach we do see a shovel which we did uh, consume our shovel by the way in our crafting recipe in the last episode we don't actually need one we have an excavation tool we just needed a shovel for that craft so it's funny that we immediately found another one but i'm not going to take it with us we would have to drop the spear and all that stuff plastic bag of yeast can we strip uh, liquor out of these you have no brew to ferment so there's not even any liquor in these stills Fermenting vat, still, still. So you don't even get booze. Fill wooden keg with saline solution. It is empty. What is the point of the moonshine still if you don't even get moonshine? I mean, it's it, the point is that it exists and that you can explore it. But like, bro, you could have given me like like two portions of moonshine left in the barrel or something. There's a step ladder. Uh, again, just too big. We're not going to be able to take that with us. All right. Well, I mean, it, it's interesting that it was added to the game. I don't uh, find it particularly important to loot. So unfortunately, what we see here, we see the uh, the human corpse here. We see a Graken to the north. That tells me that there probably was a Migo spawn there as well, and they just ran north to kind of fight with each other. And unfortunately, our western area here is just fully blocked by craters. So I think we'll actually divert south and go all the way around, I think is the smart play, just because there could be... Like, we don't know. There could be a Migo up here. College kids, several corpses of college kids are here. So that would be where, so it's not this body drop that they spawned at, it's the one to the north. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll make sure safe mode is on. We will creep north until we see Amigo. Actually, we're gonna do this from towards the forest. And we're just gonna migrate north and see if we you know two Grackens. Wait, are Grackens, 
Grackens are the chill ones, right? Because the college kids could have, like, books on them, is my main thought. They might have high-tier books. But if we look from here, the Lads of Summer, Plastic Painkiller, no, that's Acetaminophen. The baseball bat would be nice. Oh, it's a basketball, my mistake. And another basketball. So it's the sports corpses. It's not like, um, I don't know. I just thought maybe they'd have backpacks and books, but it looks like they're sports gear. So we actually don't care about that. So we're just going to head south here. And we're going to do what I said, which is divert south around these craters. I think craters now, the location has uh, like radiation potentially. I'm not 100% on that, but I just don't want to. Why would you even engage with it, right? If, if you don't have to, why even do that? Oh, it's the exit. I was like, why... Uh, why is there a building here? Okay, well, before we do that, let's mark this on the map uh, exit so that I don't uh, lose that location. Now that the mission's complete, we can't actually see it on the map, so we don't want to lose that place. So let's just get going here. We might as well use auto walk because it's just open fields at this point. And we do have safe mode on, so of course it'll stop us if something happens. Not sure how much of a berth to give to these uh, craters here. Zomborgs, really? I, so, so if you're not familiar with Zomborgs, they are one of the only enemies in the game that can now be, dis like, still be dissected for CBMs. And now I've been playing the game for many, many years, obviously even before Zomborgs were added, and, and we used to get CBMs a different way. But since they were added, I have never seen these guys in the game. And people would always tell me they're very common, oh, you're gonna find Zomborgs, don't worry about it. I have never seen them in the game, and now my first time seeing them is in the Sky Island playthrough where I do not have the tools or the time or ability to come back in order to dissect them for CBM. So this is a completely useless location to us. I'm not sure maybe there are like crates that we could pop for additional CBMs, but like there's just no way we're going to... I don't even, are they tough? Like, I don't know anything about them. A mix of dead human and even deader technology, this twisted mess of steel and flesh moves like a puppet in the hands of an angry toddler. Its robotic components seem to have shut down and new bands of flesh have wrapped around them, tugging and pulling them in awkward directions. Bits of metallic skeleton and armor plating jut from its decaying flesh. Well, there's three of you, and I don't know what your vision radius is like. Let's take another step and see if any more reveal themselves. So turn off safe mode, take a step. Okay, I thought maybe there would be more stacked up right behind them on the other tiles because they were in a tight cluster. So there is something here. It's a metal wall and a sign. I assume the sign points to Rubik again. Sign pose, basically two planks. Oh, oh no, it did say something. Hours for a little while. Okay, well, I don't know what that means. So, do we want to fight them? I should probably look them up. Actually, we should call the episode. I think I'm going to cut out a bunch of the stuff from early in the episode because it was just me fumbling around. But I think this is a good cliffhanger-y type spot to stop here. Everyone, for now, thank you for watching. I will look up the Zomborgs and stuff in the next episode. We'll talk about whether they're worth fighting at this point, given our limitations here. For now, though, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I, of course, will be back in the near future with more content, and I'll see you next time.